So be unique. Uh, use your voice. People that can do different voices and stuff like that, that's fine. But really what uh, people are looking for is, again, being real. So you want to just use your voice, but your voice may need to be uh, really excited or eh, just sort of an everyday guy or maybe a little more somber, you know, a little more serious or something like that. But it's still your voice that's coming mm -hmm. out. Probably the only caveat to all that is the bottom line is it's all about acting. Voice acting. The, right. You still have to have a little bit of performance in there to make people believe that you believe it, that you're conveying the message properly. And um, if you have to turn, you know, maybe a little role, like say you're playing a scientist or mom or whatever it is, um, you have to make that part believable. But in the world of voice acting, people cast you based on your acting ability and your vocal style. So we, we've talked about um, kind of what it takes to be a good voiceover. It's being unique, uh, being yourself. Um, what it takes to be a bad voiceover is being fake, being phony, trying to be somebody else, something that you're not. Um, in a, that's kind of in a nutshell. But um, how do you get started? You know, how do you move forward and get into the business? Now, the first thing we should say is... Um, that by taking this class, um, there is no guarantee that you're going to get any work whatsoever. Um, that is just the nature of this business. It is a very competitive business. It's a business that is wrought with um, uh, high supply being voice actors and low demand being not nearly as much work for the voice actors. And there's a voice actor born every minute now. So. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Technology has really helped people get on, on the train and anyone with a laptop and a mic can almost do it. It's the other skills that make it uh, make you the valuable talent that people want to cast. It's, Absolutely. It's the acting skills and professionalism, honestly. Um, we've worked with a lot of people in our time that they show up on time, they maybe even get there early, um, we're in a casual work environment. That doesn't mean, you know, just roll out of bed and don't take a shower. But, you know, we might not be wearing pants for all you know here. I mean, we're pretty casually dressed and this is pretty much <laughs> all we got to do for the studio. But, you know, it's still a professional environment because we're still providing a, a, a high-end product for media that uh, might be viewed by, you know, or listened to by hundreds of thousands of people, if not right. millions. Right. So you never really know. And the, the landscape, I mean, you bring up a great point, Afshar. The landscape has really changed. Um, when I started doing voiceover work, you got hired, you went to a studio, which you still do. Uh, you went to a studio, you met with the engineer, the producer, perhaps the client, you know, and you went into the booth and you did your stuff and then you came out and hopefully they said, great job. Um, but again, it was important that you show up on time probably a little early, that you're, uh, you know, you've bathed, you know, you, you don't smell bad, you know, you're, you're clean, you're presentable. I mean, you're professional, like Afshar said. Um, one of the things about going to the studio is, is that that studio is costing the client an hourly rate, anywhere from 50, 60 to $200 an hour. And if they're having to wait on you because you're running late uh, whether it be you forgot or you're stuck in traffic, whatever the reason, it really doesn't matter because the ticker is going. So you want to make sure that you get to the studio on time and you're ready to go when they are. Um, again, also, you're not going to be given a script ahead of time more than mm -hmm. likely. So you want to have uh, a few minutes, if you can, you can look over that script. So, But technology uh, has kind of changed that. And now there are a lot more home studios. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more single man operations where um, you don't have a giant setup. You have somebody with a laptop, somebody with a nice microphone, somebody with running Pro Tools, and they've got their closet set up as a voice booth. And that's fine. There's a lot of people that can, can do that sort of thing. Um, and there's lots of ways to find out how to set up your home mm -hmm. studio. This class is not going to teach you how to do that, just so we're clear. But, um, so let's go ahead and just get started. So if you want to be a voice actor, uh, after our, you've said this numerous times, you've got to get training. What's some yeah. of the best kind of training you can get? Easily acting classes. That's the bottom line. Everyone that's come to us that has had a little bit of acting training, even if it was like high school drama, they're one step ahead of the game because they've got their foot in the pool 
and they kind of know the direction to go. It's not just about, like we said, funny voices or having a cool voice. If you had a cool voice, you could be a singer, you could be an MC, you could do anything with that voice. You don't have to be a voice actor, but if you want to, the, you know, the foundation to that, I think, is, is acting classes. Absolutely. Uh, we fact, don't tell people to go take singing classes or cooking no. classes or any of that stuff. That doesn't matter. No, but we do tell everybody, I mean, without fail, <clears throat> unless they come in and they're just, you know, whoa, you blew us away. The one thing we tell them is you don't need to take our class over and over and over again. We're going to teach you what to do, but you can, and you can take those, that little skill set and take it home and practice on your own, you know, and that doesn't cost anything, which is good news. Um, but if you're going to take another class, take an acting class, get in front of a camera, work with other actors, because in the end, it's all the same. It's all right. acting, and it will help you be able to interpret scripts. And they're typically very affordable. You can get a, a bundle of classes, and it's highly recommendable just because coming to a studio for private lessons can be very uh, cost prohibitive for some people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know you know what you paid for this class. Um, it's usually three to four times more in person. Uh, so... Uh, it, it, it really does behoove you to take an acting class. Plus, you get to meet other people, you start yeah. to network, which is a big part of this business And as it's well. important to gauge your progress with your peers as well. I mean, the acting world is very competitive. You need to see what everyone's game is like, and if you need to improve your game, that's where you do it. Absolutely. Then come to us. <laughs> then come to us, right, right. Okay, so let's say you've taken the acting class, you've taken this class, you've done a little bit of practicing on your own. Um, that's easy to do practicing. You can download some free software like Audacity, um, or you can buy software to record with. Uh, I would get yourself a nice little microphone, um, not a, not a cheap one. Try to get something that's, you know, maybe a hundred to $200 because you want the quality to sound good once you record. And if you don't get a good quality microphone, it's not going to sound as great and you may get discouraged. So you don't need to go get a Neumann and spend thousands of dollars, but you do want to get a fairly decent little microphone. Um, and then you can find scripts and copy all over the internet. Pick up a magazine, pick up a newspaper. Yeah, a book, know, anything. A book or anything, exactly. And just start reading and practicing. And then... Get, and by reading, you mean out loud. Out loud, yeah. Don't <laughs> read it to yourself. Voiceover is very ineffective if you do it to yourself. Right. Um but then get somebody to listen to it, somebody that you trust and somebody that will give you an honest opinion. Don't get a friend who's, you know, trying to get you to go to the game and they're like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's go. You want to get somebody who will really listen to it and tell you if it was good or tell you if it was no good at all. Because if you don't get the proper feedback, then um, you're not going to know how to improve yourself. So you want to get that training, get that training and then train yourself, practice, practice, practice a little bit a day, five, 10 minutes a day. It doesn't take a whole lot, but you want to keep that going. Mm -hmm.